Welcome to Painting the Masters. Today we're going to be working on Two Sisters on the Terrace by Pierre Auguste Renoir. It's going to be done in the Impressionist style and we're going to begin with an underpainting of the background. And you can see in my palette that I have chosen as many of the colors in the background that I can find. We need to do an underpainting so that it is easier to add the figures in the front. We're going to be drawing over the underpainting when we get ready for the last touch, which is the two sisters. Let's make art. This looks like early spring. There's a few green leaves coming out and some flowers showing that it could be springtime. I'm going to be using a flat brush and a regular brush. I'm going to start with the flat brush because we're going to be working on water and mountains. If you look at our original here, here's the horizon line back here with some mountains and buildings in the background. Then we have the lake with a few boats. So why don't we start with our horizon line right up here toward the top. I'm going to be mixing white in my paintbrush with a little dab of blue, mixing it on my palette so that it turns lighter. If you'd like to add a little green to it, you can, but you don't have to worry too much about that right now. Pick whatever color you wish. Here is the top of our 8x10 canvas and we're ready to make our horizon line right at the top right here where the sky and the land meet the water. You can tell it's fairly high in the background. I'm just going to add a little bit of impressionistic lines here for water. I'm going to be working on that in just a few minutes. And now I would like a deeper blue for the mountains. So this time I'm going to go right into the blue. I am not cleaning up my brush. And I'm going to add a mountain line in the background. Now yours can be however you wish. It does not have to be exactly like it is in our picture, our original. You don't even have to put the buildings in if you don't want to. I'm just going to go around the buildings, letting that negative space show that they are there. And a little bit more. One thing about impressionistic painting is that you really don't want to mix your colors too much. You'd like them to be separate on the paper. So if they are getting lighter toward the bottom, that's fine. You can add just a little bit more blue if you want to make it a little darker. And it's time to add some green. I am still not going to be cleaning my brush. I'm going to be adding some green right here into my brush. And just dabbing some foliage in the background. You can see I'm using my flat brush. I'm not worried too much about any perfection. So what's so fun about impressionistic painting is that you are giving the impression of things in the background that tend to be rather blurry. The further away you are from something, the blurrier it gets. Add a little bit of that light green in there just to give it a little bit of variety. Not a lot, just a little here and there. A few little highlights. And you can bring just a touch of that because there are going to be some reflections there. And a little bit of that green over here in front of our buildings. A touch of yellow on top. You can see that I have not even cleaned my brush yet. <laughs> and just a little touch of yellow further on over here. I'm going to wet my brush on my paper towel, getting some of that color out. And 
mixing it. Make sure that it's very dry when you're done. Working with acrylic paints, you should have a dry brush. Now I'm going to be putting some white on my paintbrush and putting some of these clouds across in the sky. I'm just using white. I'm going to add color in a few minutes. If it's too bright for you, you can add a little touch of blue and that will dull it down just a little bit. For, you don't even have to mix it all up since we are doing impressionist work. And here is our roof. chimney stacks and with our smaller brush we're going to add some windows using this light blue right here you can see that I'm not worried too much about mixing just a few little suggestions of windows here it's far away, so we don't have to go too crazy with it. Okay, so far I'm liking this very much. And I think it's time to work on the water. I'm going to put my small brush aside. Make sure that you rinse the paint out. It dries very quickly, and if you leave this paintbrush out with acrylic paint on it, it will get stiff and it'll be very hard to get out. Starting with white, with a little touch of blue, dabbing sideways so that it looks like the water is moving. I'm not filling it all in because I'm going to be adding more white and some different colors for reflection. a little bit later after this dries. When we do the plants down here we're going to be double loading our brush which means one color on each side to create depth and interest in the paints. Double loading our brush, color on each side, and put a little green on this side and a little yellow on this side. And we are ready for some bushes. 
delicious. for our main figure right here. So I'm going to be moving around that space. Now I'm going to add a little white into that to add some texture and variety. we can make some very beautiful trees. See, when it comes to trees, you can be fairly free with it. And it's going to be covered with foliage, so you don't have to worry about that. Right. Now comes your choice. If you want to have fall foliage on this, you can. I'm going to try to make it as much like the original as I possibly can. But if you'd like to have some leaves that are orange and red, you can certainly do that. Try to make this thick so that it does not show through too much. You don't want the leaves too large because this tree is fairly far away. run out as you move downward.
Don't forget to add a little bit of this in the water. This can be leaves in the water, it can be reflections in the water. Okay. If you don't want to make a boat, you don't have to. Um, some of you might not have enough room, but if you do want to make a boat, you can make it right about in the middle here, almost going behind this tree. in it without cleaning my brush. I'm going to make a point on here by rolling it and then kind of rolling it in. That's better. And a couple of little figures here. Make sure that your painting is dry by pressing a fingertip on it and making sure that no paint comes off on your hands before you begin the drawing. Here's our inspiration. So her head is going to be going right about here in the center of our painting. This particular one is going to be going pretty close to the bottom right here. So if we look at the face, this particular face it has been printed out so it's about the same size as my canvas. And I would say that when I put my paintbrush on it, the face is about the height from the tip of my brush almost to the bottom. I'd say the silver part is the right size. You might have to measure yours in a different way, but no matter what size you make the face, it's fine. Just make sure that the body is in proportion. So I want my face to be in the center of my canvas. I want it to be about this tall, making sure I have room for the hat. So I'm going to make myself two guidelines right here that I want her face to be about this big. It's a little bit tipped to the side. It gives her a look of looking at you a little bit. So if you want to tip it, you can. If it's not tipped to the side a little bit, then it's going to look fine. If you want to tip it to the side, simply make your oval a little bit sideways. So that means that I would want the top of the head to be here and the chin to be right about here because it matches up with there. So here is my head. Drawing right there. I'm pretty happy with that. Her hat goes low over her head like this. So draw a line lower than the top of the head of the person that you have drawn. The top of her hat is fairly wide, goes up to the top and dips down below. Go past the line that you made and dip right back here like this. We can always paint the hair in a little bit later. It's the basic drawing that you want to be working on now. This comes out to the side, around, and right about to the middle of the head. Should line up pretty much with that one. So her eyes are right about here. Give yourself a little guideline where her eyes are. Only have to draw the tops. Give her a little bit of a pupil down here. Actually, I think she's looking more in this direction. There we go. The nose is fairly easy. Give yourself just a very light dip, almost like a V. Just a suggestion of the nose is good. Try not to make it very wide. Her mouth is also very small. Take a look at this mouth. It's not very much wider than the nose, but it is wider. Give her a nice smile. There's her top lip, there's her bottom lip. 
This is just a suggestion as to how she looks. It's not going to come out exactly like this. Her hair comes low over her head like this. Her ear comes right about where her hat comes down. You can barely see this one over here. The hair is wider than the head. So this ear is here. So now we can kind of finish this face, bringing it around and up. Her hat could be a little bit wider. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more like this. She's got some flat, pretty flowers right there. And there we go. Before we get too far with her body, we're going to draw the child. So we know where she is. You can tell when you line up your pencil that the little sister's head ends right about the same place where the big sister's head does. You can see her head's on this side of the pencil, her head's on this side of the pencil. You need to make her high enough so that she has room for a body. So lining it up here, I think her head would be right about there, don't you? So I'm going to draw a little circle for her. This is just a sketch. Try not to make her head too small because we don't want her to look like she's an infant because she is a little girl. And her hat is even larger. It comes over her head like this. We're probably going to be drawing into these here, which is fine. Over to the side. Here is her hat here. It's wider on this side, all the way around. You might have to draw on yours too, so don't worry about that. And her hat comes very low. Let's give her a little bit more shape. There we go. And do the same thing here, only worry about the tops of the eyes and the pupils and irises. Here we are. She's a child, so her nose is very small. There we go. Eyebrows are very light, and she has bangs. And long hair, and ear hair. You don't necessarily have to make your child look like this one, but if you're wanting to make it look like the Renoir, then you would put some flowers on here. And this is something that you can kind of have fun with. Looks like she has a feather right there. Let's start working on her body here. She's got a V-neck right there. She has what they call on a sailor top or boating dress. So we're just going to right here. She's got a nice collar. Her sleeve. trouble making anything this sophisticated, simply make it a simple head. The simpler the better. If you try to get too complex, it can kind of go sideways. Here is a simple student drawing of the same painting. Collar. And her dress comes out here. It 
almost goes into the this little girl's hat. This is her waist. And her arm comes down. Very simple fingers. These two are together. And her small finger is right there. I'll work on that a little bit more when I'm doing the painting and her other hand is right underneath with her sleeve right there. This is easy, it goes right behind the little girl. If you haven't refilled your palette or cleaned your water, now is a good time. These paints might have dried up a little bit while you were waiting for your painting to dry. You can either add more paint or you can spray water on it to reactivate it. When you're mixing a face color, it's best to start with a lot of white. So you might want to take it to the side yourself a clean place on your palette and then make sure you have enough you don't want to run out of this color because once you make it it's hard to remake this is how you add color to it you add just a teeny bit see how far that goes I barely put any red in there Your red was can be whatever color you wish, whatever color skin. I'm going to add a little bit of orange now. Carefully paint over the face. Add a little bit of water to your paint so you can see your drawing underneath. If you add too much, you'll be able to see the painting. Just adding a little bit. Make sure that you get the ears. Always go back over these hands if you they disappear when you do your clothing. Go up into the bangs a little bit when they come down. I have a feeling you can't see my eyes anymore, but I can still see them through my paint. To let that dry before we can add any details. You can add shading if you wish, but quite often what happens at this point um, for beginners when they add shading is that um, it becomes kind of a mess and difficult to handle. So I would just leave this alone for now. And let's go on to the dress. I'm going to work on the very, very deep blue, kind of an underpainting of deep blue using just pure blue paint. And just going over right here. You can see that I did not dry my brush out well enough, so it has way too much water in it. So I'm drying it out on a paper towel. I'm so glad that happened so I could show you what happens when you have too much water there. See the difference? 
carefully painting. When we did the background, it went very fast because we were able to do a little bit more of an impressionistic style. But we need to slow down now and take our time. There, the dress is done. It's going to add a little bit more. If your paint is not thick enough, wait for it to dry and you can always add a little bit more paint to it. If you'd like to add a shadow, violet is not a bad color to add, like this. If you want to add a little bit of depth to it. Let's work on this dress here. This is a very nice, um, has a little bit of green in it, so I'm going to add a little bit more green to my blue to show a little bit of a difference. try to paint the strokes the same direction that the hair is growing in. I'm using my small brush and I'm being very careful. If you make a mistake with acrylic paint, simply let it dry completely so that when you touch it, no paint comes up and paint over it. 
you can even paint white over it so that it's a blank canvas again. It works really well. So I'm adding yellow to my brush. Make sure that your paintbrush is very dry, not too wet, and that you have a nice point on it, that you've rolled it to a point. Now it's time to let it dry again. All right, now it's time for our very, very last thing that we're gonna be doing. I'm going to be using a few unusual materials, and one of them is going to be a Q-tip. It makes great flowers. We're going to be adding several of these flowers that are white in the background. We're gonna be adding these flowers here, and the things in the basket don't have to make this an exact replica, so when it comes to the flowers, you can have fun with it however you wish. Think about contrast though. You don't want a lot of blue flowers with a blue hat on a blue background, so you might want to think of some bright colors. Of course, if you want to make pink, you can add white and red together, mix it up a little bit, or you can just dab it on and hope that it mixes on its own. I'm just going to put my Q-tip down and I'm going to swirl it just like that. It makes a beautiful rose. And you could make as many roses as you wish. You need to change the tip if you change the color. So you might need several of these to make more flowers. Maybe we'll have another rose up here, a little bit wider. It's time to make this ray on the cross. It's hard to make a straight line, so I'm going to use a chopstick. You can use a pencil or whatever else you have. sure that you have a tip on your brush. You 
can see that it's much easier if you use a toothpick or something straight. But this can be done if you're very careful. You want your rails to be about the same width apart. That's as far as you need to go. If you want to add the other design to it, you can. It has curved sides on the sides. You can add this, but it's really not necessary. It's basically a half of a circle that curves outward. adding some beautiful white spring flowers just with a q-tip you might want to use the flatter part of it so you don't have the hole in the middle and if extra colors come into it that just makes it all the more beautiful make sure that they're nice and thick There's so many beautiful white flowers in this painting. notice with most of my art students is that it's very hard to control a liner brush when you're trying to paint. So I highly suggest that you finish your work with Sharpies. They work out very well. Uh, one of the things I noticed was that I did not have my trees come all the way down so I used a purple and brown Sharpie to bring that down. And you can add um, certain twigs and little details like this to make it look even more refined. Add some branches um, that you didn't have before, just to add a little detail. Make it look just a little more like our Renoir. I would use an ultra-fine Sharpie the very, very small tip for the eyes. I can still see mine through the paint. If you can't, you can draw it in pencil first. And you're just drawing the top of the eye. Don't worry about the whites. When you try to add whites in a painting like this, it just makes it very difficult to do. I've done this um, very, very often with my students. So I've learned that this is just a very difficult thing for them to work on. You can also add color, so I chose two blues for the eyes. 
And we'll try that on this one. Looks just fine. And I would add just a little bit of darkness in it to make them look a little more realistic. The ultra fine sharpie. Adding just a little bit of lip color. I'm using a peach color. Um, I looked at the Renoir and both of sisters have a very peachy color. This looks much better on children than red because um, most kids don't wear lipstick. Let's try this one now. You're just drawing the top of a football. The canvas is completely dry. Sometimes it's difficult drawing on canvas because it is not flat. And the nose. Very delicate nose. A little bit wider than the little girl's and the lips. The nice thing about this is that you can change it if you don't like the drawing underneath. I'm using the darker blue here and she's looking to the side. So I'm going to put her eyes over to the side like this for that pose, that look. A little bit of darkness to the eyes. to add anything else, please don't. And a nice eyebrow at the top. These should not be too wide. And of course, the same color on the lips. If you like, you can use the same color for a shadow under the chin. It looks like a darker peach color. This is very difficult to do when you're trying to do it with paint. You can add a little bit of the shadow under her hair if that makes you feel better. Give it more of a 3D look. And the same with the hands. You can outline this with black sharpie, but I suggest that you just use shadows on the fingers instead. And this is the hand underneath, which is probably another shadow. Just a little bit on the little girl's hands. don't have to add too much on her, just maybe a little on her face. Give her some definition. Long eyes. She has a very, very, very pale eyebrows. So I'm going to add a, just a very thin line here. Hardly anything at all. And here we have our Benoit, two sisters at the terrace. I hope you enjoyed making this. I had fun with it too. I did this by request from somebody who follows me on Instagram and also follows me on YouTube. So if you have any requests, just leave some comments to me and I will try to do my best. Thank you very much for watching.